Hello and welcome. Well, the world has been going through and is continuing to go through a really tough time at the moment with so much that really feels like it's out of our control. And I guess when we're experiencing tough times, uh, one way that we can start to take control of our own world is by simply mastering our thoughts and our emotions. You know, by choosing to do what matters each day, and that's to lift our perspective and to put ourselves into the place that provides us with an opportunity to find, experience, and feel happiness each day. And let's face it, you know, that's all we really want in life, and that's just just to be happy. And the truth be told, I guess, if we can find happiness with everything that's been going on around the world and all the chaos, it really should make it a lot easier to find happiness in any other times in, in our lives we are, when we're likely to experience struggles and hardship again. So to help talk to us about this today and how we can make this month, the month of June and of course, July next month, um, quite joyful is our special guest, Jay Anderson, a special guest that we haven't had on Kibipedia before, but one of our um, partners here at Kibipedia. Now, a bit of an introduction about Jay. Now, Jay is a registered psychologist, counsellor and play therapist. Now, Jay has worked in the human services field for 20 years, um, of which the last 10 years have involved therapeutic work. Now, as a client-centered, strength-based pra practitioner who uses a whole range of different techniques. She practices in Southwest uh, Southwest Western Australia, if I can get my words out, sorry, at the Southwest Wellbeing Centre. Um, and she's got a passion really for making a difference. And that's what she's here to do today. So, so thank you so much for joining us, Jay. How are you? Great. Thanks. Well, thanks for joining us. And your motto for this month is that there is always something to be grateful for. So to begin with, can you tell us a little bit about your inspiration for this? I guess when I think about things to be grateful for, I think about nature and the world that we live in and the beauty that is around us. Um, but I guess in terms of my inspiration for that um, mindset that I have would probably be my parents. So they taught me values and the importance of being happy and positive. Yeah, it's incredible when we really do look back at our own lives and see the impact our, our parents have had on us. And then you sort of look at, you know, children this generation or the parents that we speak to as well. And sort of as a mirror of that, just thinking how are we sort of impacting them that they are going to say the same thing later on in their lives as well. Now, um, yeah, in an article that you've written for us, which we're going to speak about in just a moment, you mentioned winter and the correlation about it being a hard time for many people um, and winter as an analogy, I guess, when referring to a period of time in our lives that is a little dark and difficult, which everyone's been there. Um, and as we know, um, the world is, is really suffering at the moment. Um, and I guess we're in a transient state where I guess we're the in in inhabitants of everyone on, on planet Earth. Yeah, us human beings are evolving and growing. And, and in particular with what's been happening uh, in America in the last um, sort of few weeks, really standing up for, for what is right. Um, but, you know, I, I think you would agree, as everyone would agree, that positive energy and persistence really can conquer all things. So um, I'd love to know, in your opinion, you know, how can we use this time, um, I guess, um, what, what's been happening here um, throughout the world in, in 2020 so far, um, how can we use this time to be a force for good and positive change? Yes, I guess ultimately for me it's about knowing that we can choose how we think and how we feel and we can spend this time to reflect on life and consider what we can change and um, so we can be more aware of our mindset and our interactions with others um, which then affects our actions and our responses yeah and I guess with um with with for your business have, have you seen a, a change in people's mindset um you know so far this year or or not at all I have seen a few different changes. So some people are more um, worrying and more anxious, particularly about their health or the health of their families. And other people have spent the time to spend more time with their family and reflect on perhaps how their lives have been out of balance and therefore they're thinking about what changes they can make moving forward. Yeah, I think, um, you know, definitely the, 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 the period of lockdown, as you've just said, was really a time for reflection. And a lot of people did sort of consciously or sub subconsciously sort of take a bit of a, a look or um, a reflection of their life. Is, is that something that you did also as well? 
definitely, yes, it's been great to spend a bit more time um, in the world around us and catching up with nature and spending a bit of time just watching the world around us for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, you know, in life, sometimes we have to sort of get through the challenging times really to, to appreciate the good, um, you know, hard times in general help us, you know, form our character and bring out, I guess, the best in us. Um, and sometimes I guess we have to get through the winter in life to get through to the summer, you know, using that analogy of, of the seasons yeah. again. So yeah, in your experience then, um, how have you personally helped people make the transition through tough times? So in the different roles that I have as a coach and a counsellor and a psychologist, I help people through those tough times by sharing their feelings and giving them a space and a place to help them process things mm -hmm. um, and then reflecting on some goals and things that they can do to change moving forward. So do you sort of give them homework then after, the, after you see them? How does, it, how does it usually work? Some people... Um, can spend some time and benefit from doing that and for other people it's more about them um, being more reflective and noticing their thoughts and their feelings. And do you find gen generally people when they're wanting to make a change have actually been through a tough time in their life and it's after that period of reflection given if it's been this year and the way that it's been so far and or other periods in, in, in life as well? Have, have you, in your experience have, have, have you sort of I don't know seen that at all? Absolutely yes for sure. Yeah. And, you know, sort of speaking about the seasons, I guess, you know, I guess we can't really stop difficult times from coming in our lives or the winter from coming each year um, and all the seasons of life that are changing as well. <laughs> but one thing we can always um, change, of course, is how we approach each situation um, and what frame of mind that we do put ourselves into each day. Um, I think so much of life really starts and ends uh, in our minds and um, what we give power to really has power over us, you know, if we allow it. <laughs> so you know, could you tell us um, why you think it's so important to always find, you know, just something to be grateful for in life? Ultimately, um, as you mentioned, we can choose how we view things. And so our perspective will then alter how we experience the world around us, our thoughts and our feelings impact on our experiences. So being grateful and appreciating things can help us get through life situations and it can help us um, enjoy life more, as you mentioned in your introduction about being happier and enjoying life. Yeah. Um, you know, and the human mind really is an incredible thing. And um, it's, it, I think a lot of viewers and listeners would have, would have heard that the phrase that, you know, that we can't be angry and grateful at the same time. Um, and I think when, when we're generally in a, in a really positive state and we're grateful for things in, in a happy state of mind, we don't necessarily tend to, um, I think, notice so much of the, the, the bad stuff in our life. We sort of rise above it and tend to like attracts like, doesn't it? And so if we're in a really positive, uplifting state of mind, we tend to see the good in things and, and don't necessarily tend to notice all, all the bad stuff. Um, so, you know, in your, in, in your um, opinion, do you think that um, our, our outlook on life really is in our minds? Um, and yeah, I'd just love to know what you think about this. Absolutely. Certainly our mindset affects our outlook on life. Um, our experiences affect that as well. But as I mentioned, we can choose how we frame that and how we um, put that into proportion in our lives. So it is about um, being grateful for things and being positive and putting things in perspective so that we can um, move through the things, those tough times and those challenges. Yeah. What about pers like perspective? I think it's a, a really powerful thing as well. You know, and as, a, as another saying that, you know, life never changes, only our perspective of things do. So the things around us don't necessarily change all too much, but, you know, the way that they can change for us personally is the way that we choose to see them or the way that we feel about them. Um, and in your article as well, um, which uh, I'll ask about in just a moment, but you know, you, you use um, um, 
an analogy of the dandelion. And I'd love to use this as an example because it's, it's, it's in our logo. And that's something that I chose when I was sort of, of course, building the foundations for the business. It's really um, a symbol of Kibipedia. Um, and, you know, as the saying goes, when you look at a field of dandelions, you can choose to either see a hundred weeds or a thousand wishes. <laughs> um, the, the dandelion in our, um, in our logo um, really is the hope and a wish for a better future for all children. That's why it's, it's actually in, in our logo. But I love the fact that you mentioned it in the article that you just say, you know, when you look at a field of dandelions, you can choose to see a hundred weeds or a thousand wishes, which really does really tell us that, that the perspective of things and, and the lens that we apply to life and the way that we choose to see and feel things um, really starts in our mind. So, you know, in your, in your point of view, you know, how can, can how do you think people can sh shift their perspective to a positive place, um, especially during this challenging time that we've been through this year so far? Absolutely. And I guess um, aside from shifting perspective, it's also about noticing those small things, like you were saying, in terms of things in nature. Ultimately, if we notice the detail on the small things, that can help us to slow down and to be more in tune with our body and the world around us. Um, so ultimately, it's about being self-aware. It's about noticing our thoughts and our feelings, um, choosing what we listen to, who we spend time with, what we watch. Um, all of that can affect our perspective on life. Yeah. And a lot of people think that change in life sort of takes a long time for you to, to change from thinking or feeling one particular way to, to changing, you know, to, to change into a better or an, a, to be in, in, a, in another place mentally, um, you know, or in just in, in, in this state of mind. But in fact, change in, in that instance can come in an instant. Um, it really can, can happen in a heartbeat. Um, and I guess you just got to want to have to change or, or have a reason to change, I guess. So, you know, in your view, what needs to happen in order for people to shift their thought process for good and I guess not to change back to old thought patterns then? Yes. So as I was mentioning before, ultimately it's about people being self-aware, um, noticing their thoughts, being aware of what their challenges are um, and being willing to try and do things a little bit differently. So just one small change can cause that ripple effect in the rest of your life. So it is about doing something differently and consistently to create new habits. What's the frame of mind? I uh, said, so it's not the frame of mind. Sorry. I take that back. What is the period of time that you, you have to go through in order for there to be changes? Is, is it three months that you go through if you're consistently doing the same thing? Is, is it three months, three month period? That um, you... It depends. It depends on what research you read. Uh, for a lot of people, ultimately it's that 30 day period. In 30 terms days. Of doing something consistently um that can definitely help you get started on doing things differently for sure yeah and um and do you generally find that people then tend to sort of slip back into old thought patterns um and or what what do they need to do to be able to keep themselves in that trajectory of you know continuing sort of along that new path um and making sure that they they don't go back Ultimately, it's about being gentle on yourself and knowing that we're all human and that we all make mistakes or slip back into the ways our body's used to doing things. So it is just about trying again and going, oh, that's right, I'm doing this differently now and going back to the new way of doing things. So it is about understanding that it will be difficult to change something, but it's possible and it's all about us taking the time to be consistent with that. Yeah. I'm not sure there's going to be many people that will come out of this um, whole COVID period and necessarily go back to maybe the way that exactly that they, they were before because the, the world and life ha has changed so much. So I think in every way, shape or form, everybody will go through a form of this um, period of growth because, you know, we always grow when things are, are difficult because we have to find new ways of dealing with things. And there's been <laughs> a whole list of different things that we've had to do differently, obviously, obviously over the last few months. So everybody in, in their own way is going to sort of I, I go through a, a shift in their thought process now as we do sort of, I guess, move into this new normal. Um, and I think it's just a matter of to what degree um, 
I guess, do, do, do people want to sort of change um, their lives and, and also just ensure that they don't go back to, to some form of a, an old pattern that was sort of pre-COVID era? I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, yes, I agree with you. And ultimately, it's about people um, recognising that that's a choice. Again, that's a choice that they can make. So it's about the time that they've spent in reflecting or noticing differences and noticing that they have been able to do things differently and they can keep doing things differently. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we published your article, June Joy and Happiness. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Sure. So I guess for me, it was just reflecting on um, that change of season. And I know for lots of people, winter can be challenging. It's often grey and rainy and cold. Um, and I talked a little bit about um, life with my dog, who I enjoy spending time with, and how we go out every morning irrespective of what the weather is. And so I could choose to stay at home in bed and go, oh, it's too cold and rainy. <laughs> or I could choose to get out there and um, enjoy a bit of life and a bit of the change of weather. And I know I can come home to a nice hot shower and be grateful for having a warm place to be. Um, and a roof over my head. So it was just reflecting on um, that change of season and the mindset and how people can choose how they think and feel and how their day can go. Yeah. And uh, you provide a list in the article um, of what we can do differently this month, um, being June, but of course we've got July and August as well um, for, for our winter months. Um, but to help us live, I guess, in a more joyful and happy state, um, can you just maybe go through a few, few of those um, items that you have on that list? Sure. So ultimately it was about um, thinking about things that make you happy or that you enjoy. So the first thing was about listening to things that make you happy mm -hmm. um, and then planning to spend some time with people that help you be happy. Um, for some people, being more creative can help as well. So drawing, drawing it how you feel with colours and shapes. Um, and if things are still difficult for you or you can't shift a particular feeling or mood, then it might be appropriate to get some professional support and to speak to a psychologist or a counsellor who can give you some assistance with changing that mindset. And I guess after making that list and everyone thinking about, you know, the first thing that you mentioned about what, what makes you happy and the second one planned sometimes with people who make you happy, there is a very natural pro progression of sort of saying, okay, well, these are the things. And first of all, it's a nice thing to actually just sit and, and and, and think about what actually makes you happy because a lot of the time we don't actually know <laughs> um, sort of consciously, subconsciously we do, but maybe not um, sort of consciously. But there is a natural sort of step, I guess, isn't it, to sort of to, to go and, and, and make an attempt to do those things that make you happy and or, of course, to make time around, to spend time around people that make you happy as well. Um, so I think, would you say that, that that's the next, natural next step after sort of making that list is to make plans as well? Absolutely. Yes. So it is about, um, again, having some small changes in your life. Um, so they're things that you can do or plan to, um, to look forward to, you know, in terms of having some things that you're planning, but it's also about helping you with those different feelings that you might be experiencing in terms of um, noticing the feelings and shifting the feelings at different times. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess at any stage of the year, not just now, but looking after ourselves both mentally and physically is, is really vital. Um, and as we've just mentioned earlier on in the chat as well, speaking about um, keeping check of our perspective on things as well. Of course, we can sort of be one point of the year and be in a really great perspective and, you know, a few things can sort of come across our path and, you know, <laughs> can change our perspective and, uh, and put us into a little bit more of a glum or negative state as well. So keeping check on our perspective perspective is something that I guess is really important, which you mentioned in the article as well. Um, but that sort of can help our, us manage our, our emotions as well. Um, and, and our behavior, as I think as well, you know, once we have our um, emotions out of check, I think our behaviors change as a reflective uh, of that. But to help um, others, I guess, manage what um, they think about each day in this month, um, you've been affiliated with another group who's put together um, a calendar. Um, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about this calendar and how it can help others? Sure. So earlier this year, I participated in an eight week course with some other local people in my community. Um, yep. And that was with um, Action for Happiness. So it was about exploring what matters in your life. Um, and the, the um, 
information shared there is ultimately about um, reflecting on your life and understanding that there's lots of different things that we can do in our life that help us be happy um, and sharing that with others is important as well. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about the Action for Happiness website and I guess what people can benefit from visiting that website? Yes. So it's a really great resource with lots of information. There's little videos, there's um, sheets, there's uh, calendars like the calendar that I shared. So ultimately it's things that you can listen to, reflect on um, and consider your life in that perspective as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, this has been um, a really great chat and it's really made us think um, about, I guess, these winter months um, and what we can enjoy, um, experience um, or appreciate a little bit more and um, definitely how our listeners and viewers um, can reframe things, I guess, for, for their children, um, for themselves, for their, for their partner, for their family um, and how they can help, um, you know, as individuals for us to be a little bit more curious or appreciate and do things differently. I guess if you were to summarize, I guess your key messages um, from the article and from our chat today, um, I guess, how would you summarize those for our, our listeners and viewers? Ultimately it's about knowing that you can choose um, how your life goes in terms of that perspective that you have on your life. Um, and um, I guess I want people just to think a little bit more about how their life is and think about some things that they can be grateful and happy for. That's wonderful. And if um, people want to get in touch with you um, and or they've got any other questions, whereabouts can they find you? So they can find my website online, the Southwest Wellbeing Centre, and I'm certainly very happy to help um, people with making a difference in their lives. Thank you for the chat. It's been great um, sort of having this conversation today and um, I'll definitely make a, a point of actually putting some time aside and listing the things that actually make me happy um, and, uh, and planning some times with people actually that make me happy as well. So thank you for, for giving me some homework as well. And I'm sure everyone else um, <laughs> listening and watching will have a link through to that article, um, of course, in the show notes for, for you to have a look at. And um, hopefully um, we've, we've helped some people listening and watching us today. But thanks again for your time and we'll speak again soon. Take care, Jay. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye.